Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday. On Tuesdays this month, we've been having some good conversation on Zoom at noon and seven. Uh, and uh, this yesterday, we talked about womanist theology. And I wanted to just simply introduce a theory or a, a concept that perhaps many people had not talked about and introduce names that perhaps no one had heard of few, or few people had heard of. Have you heard, have you heard these names? Emily Towns, Kelly Brown Douglas, Dolores Williams, or Katie Cannon. They are all womanist scholars, womanist theologians. And, uh, you know, I, I know enough to, to be dangerous with how little I know, and so I thought I'd better engage in uh, some of their writing a little bit more deeply. Um, and uh, I wanted to just write, read a, a brief paragraph by Katie Cannon who said, in my experience as a black woman in a racist and misogynist society, tremendous pressure is continually exerted on me to choose between my racial identity and my womanhood. Black women are repeatedly asked to cast our lot, identifying loyalties in one or the other competing camp. Either we are blacks or we are women. Despite womanist scholars' best efforts in arguing that this is a conceptual impossibility because we embody both realities as black women, the full force of the punitive and damaging effects of binary categories remain intact. When African American women defy the traditionally accepted race and gender niches of where others think we are and our work belong, our essential worth and competence comes into question. Katie, uh, who died in 2018, uh, was the first black woman ordained in the Presbyterian Church in 1974. Um, but was not given a parish uh, as a Presbyterian or was not called by a, a church um, because no church would call a black woman. Uh, so she went into academics. She got her PhD at Union in New York and went on to teach and was in the end a, a professor of Christian ed ethics. But she started a, a center for womanist studies. And uh, I just have to engage more with this woman's work. It is... I mean, as she said back in her time, um, she was like E.T. People just didn't know what to do or think of her. Uh, and she took that and creatively uh, uh, spun a narrative or created a narrative of, li of liberation. She said she and her fellow theologians, uh, seminarians in the 70s, read Tillich and Bart. Um, they were fully conversant, but they kept asking, where is our liberation in these works? Where do we get out of the head and deal with the freedom struggles we have? Um, and uh, she did so brilliantly. Uh, but as she mentioned in this paragraph, um, the existential or the, uh, the uh, angst that that creates, the, the constant pressure, um, she talked about uh, joy, how we're supposed to have joy by putting it in this order, Jesus, others, and you. But she said, how can we care for others if we don't care for ourselves? If we don't love ourselves first, how can we love others? And uh, that's part of the foundation of her work as well. So those are some names. Uh, that's an idea, womanist theology, for you to hear today. And uh, perhaps you can explore some of it. I'll put a link uh, to some short YouTube clips so you can experience Katie Cannon yourself. And hope this helps bring you a grateful day. Bye.